Well, greetings everyone, good to have you back. Just wanted to give you guys a little update. Kelly and I have wrapped up our motorcycle trip here. I appreciate everyone that viewed those videos. I hope you enjoyed them. We just had the time of our lives. Even though the trip got cut a little bit short, we didn't complete the last two sections, although we did a good 500 miles of backcountry uh, riding on our bikes through Washington State. It was amazing. Uh, what ended up happening is I started having shifting problems with my bike. So we cut the trip short, rented a U-Haul van, put the bikes, in the U-Haul, got them back to where our vans were parked and uh, pretty much abandoned the trip. And I decided to find another mechanic. What we had done is in Lake Chelan at the end of section four of the Washington BDR route, um, I knew I wouldn't be able to continue as, as it was. So I drove it into Cashmere Power Sports and they completely overlooked a simple fix. Uh, they thought it was something internal, what they inspected, they couldn't find anything. So uh, yeah, that's when we decided to rent the U-Haul and get back to the vans and abort the trip. And then once we were back to our vans, I found another mechanic, although he was quite backed up, it took him a while to even look at it. But once he did, it was a quick fix for him. Um, I had tinkered around, you know, this is a new to me motorcycle. I had tinker tinkered around with things. It was basically just not downshifting from higher gears. So it was a lot like this, just kind of empty clicks. Um, and you know, you push all the way down, it would just never engage into the lower gear. So uh, what he had found was that this pivot point here, it was bound up. There was like a spring washer in there and it was moving, but not returning all the way up to its upper position. And that throws off the whole shifting internally. So that was the issue. He pulled this bolt out, lubed it up, put it back in and it was good to go. I had burnt the clutch up pretty good riding it, stuck in higher gears, so I had him replace the clutch as well while it was there. Yeah, but overall, um, yeah, I was a little disappointed in myself that I didn't figure that out on my own, but also really disappointed that the first shop I took it to didn't catch it either and wanted to proceed to like split the case and do a major transmission overhaul. So um, yeah, it is what it is. It all worked out and we just had the time of our lives on that trip. It was just such a good time. Ian and Kelly just really just uh, continued to bond uh, in a relationship and just enjoyed the riding, the camping, the scenery. It was amazing. So anyway, this little clip right here is a little out of sequence. Uh, we had finished up that trip a few weeks ago and I actually just got this bike back a few days ago. Um, so we had gone out and done some camping and trips without my trailer and bike. I stored the trailer at Kelly's family's place here in Washington. So things are a little bit about it, out of sequence in this video, but I know it can be confusing in YouTube land. Uh, time travel is complicated. I also just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who reached out with advice to try to help with the situation with the motorcycle. I had posted a quick video clip at that shop when we were um, trying to figure it out. And so many of you reached out with advice, offers to help to come pick us up and take us where we needed to be. And it was just, just overwhelming. You guys are amazing. I just really appreciate it. Although we ended up remedying the situation on our own, it was very nice and comforting uh, to have all that advice and support from all you guys so i really appreciate it thank you but anyway we're going to continue on in this video kelly and i got out to do some hiking around mount st helens uh, we found a big lava tube we could hike through so we'll bring you guys along well i gassed up at this space age gas station gas was 485 a gallon for regular unleaded still pretty high up in washington state uh, i've had the van parked for quite a bit uh, in uh, Extended family's driveway, so I uh, got it filled up and ready to roll. We're going to head south a little bit from here. And get into the National Forest. Kind of a cool, drizzly day today. Actually not that cool. I think it's like 70 degrees. Fortunately, we're going to be using Interstate 5 for a little bit. Let me get off onto a smaller highway. And we're gonna sit back and enjoy the ride. Away we go. The sun is starting to make its way through the clouds there. I'm seeing some blue skies. 
welcome sight. Looks like from the interstate, we're gonna be driving in a good 40 miles into the woods. Get away from it all for a little bit. Saw this sign for this Yale Park. Thought I'd stop in and see what it's about. A fee or what? Let's check it out. Oh, deja vu. I feel like I've been here before, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. Wow, nice view. Figure out what lake this is. Yale Reservoir. Oh, those low clouds look neat. Well, the water's extremely calm and glassy here. There's like no wind. This would be nice for uh, kayaking. We're gonna be camped not too far from here, so we may come back. Got the inflatable kayak. Kelly's got a fold-up kayak, so this might be worth it. Love how these clouds are settling on these mountaintops. Looks so cool. Okay, we are moving on from Yale Reservoir, coming into the small town of Cougar, Washington. Looks like there's much to it. A little uh, post office there on the right. Looks like we do have a gas station, little market, ice cream. Mmm. Bigfoot burgers. A little visitor center with a restroom there as well. Didn't even see the gas price. Five thirty-nine here. Wow. Glad I filled up earlier. Cougar Bar and Grill. Well, Looks like about it. St. Helens Volcanic National Monument. Well, there's a little pull off here. I'm going to check it out. I passed a couple of these. I don't see a vehicle in here. It's a little rugged. Maybe too rugged for my van. Let me walk it and check. Okay, this is kind of a steep little entry point here, but. Oh, I'm scraping. Yeah, that's too steep for my van. Going to have to find a different one. There's a nice little camp up there, though. But that is just too steep for me. I'm scraping my back bumper. We're going to have to find something else, unfortunately. We found another pull-off here without the big incline, but it doesn't look like there's very much room. For two vehicles. Let's check it out. Well, I could probably turn off over here. Yeah, I think we could fit in here. Just the two of us. Cool. And we can change spots uh, tomorrow after Kelly gets here. Let me check if I've got service. Hey, that works out. Kind of dark in here in the woods, but let's check it out. All right, well, I think this will work for a camp. This is a cool little spot. There's a nice level spot up here. There is a little rock fire ring, but there's currently a burn ban in this forest, so no campfires. And there's a decent sized little space here. It's pretty level. I think Kelly can back in and have her door facing the back of my van there. We'll have a nice little uh, camp for a little bit. This may just be an overnight. We may do some further exploring and find something uh, more appealing to us, but I actually really like it here. We are pretty close to this uh, paved forest road but there has not been any traffic. I didn't see anyone coming in or out on my way in here. So yeah, I think this will work. 
It's supposed to clear up tomorrow, be clear and sunny and warm for the rest of the week up in the high 70s, even low 80s. So that'll work for us. And uh, who knows, we may make it back down to the reservoir and do some kayaking there. I've got to make sure I have everything for my kayak with me. I feel like I don't have my paddle with me. Uh, as you can see, I don't have my trailer. The trailer is parked in extended family's driveway while my bike is getting worked on. So we'll have some more updates on that. But in the meantime, we're just going to get out there and enjoy nature. All right, well, we broke camp for a little bit. We drove a few miles down here to the Ape Caves, part of the Mount St. Helens National Monument. And we are gonna take a hike through the cave. I believe it's a good couple miles. Kelly's done it a while ago. It's yeah, been- years and years ago, before there was a ticket system. So now you need to do an online reservation thing. It's supposedly free, but it costs you $2 if you do it online. I think there's a few days a week you can do it here in person. We just did it online. We had just enough cell service to do that. So we're making our way to the cave now. It's supposed to be really dark. We got headlamps, backup lights, and it's supposed to be cold. So we're totally overdressed. I am burning up now, but hopefully it'll be cold down there. So here we go. Yeah, this is gonna be a rugged hike. You can tell when you see socks out. I think it's gonna <laughs> knock our socks off. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cave entrance right here. Kind of creepy. I'll go first. Into the darkness. Headlamps on. Okay, so we are in the cave and it is very dark in here. We're not even all the way in. I'm going to uh, shut the lights off and see how dark it is. It's pitch black. Kind of freaky, but kind of cool. It's definitely cooler down here. So we're gonna get after it. Kelly's got a pretty high powered flashlight there. You can just see the reflective on your shoes. This is a pretty big room that we're in right now. It's again, gonna be very difficult to capture on camera, but it's just huge in here. Wow. It really does feel like a tube. It kind of flows in one direction. I think that's our pile of rocks that we need to climb over. We've got to climb up over those rocks and it opens back up. All right, let's push forward. Pretty sure we're doing the upper section, which uh, at the end of it brings you back up to above ground. The lower section is just out and back by the stairs. And in this section here, there was a pretty good run of climbing up over boulders and then back down. And then it looks like from here, this seriously looks like it wasn't done by man. It's like a perfect arch tunnel. It's amazing. Again, it's really hard to capture on camera with low light, but the way it just bends around the curve here it's just like this perfect tunnel. Okay, we just came up that little climb and as soon as we got up here, all of a sudden there's this really, really, uh, not strong breeze, but pretty good flow of air, cool air. So we're thinking, we're getting close to the end and it's starting to get a lot more narrow. Look at these little points where the water's dripping off. That drop's just about to go. So I actually have to hunker down to get through this part. It's like these lava turds just oozing out. It's another good one up here. You can see like the layers.
that's flowing out from right up there. Okay, so we're at this little section here where there's a pretty good little steep climb. There's a rope hanging. Kelly made it up. So I'm going to try my, try my hand at it here. I don't know if that I can do this one-handed, though. Hopefully that rope is uh, just tied around a rock. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the rope's getting held. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> Let me put this light up here. Okay. Alright. Yeah, that was a good little yeah. good little drop down there. And we're kind of surprised we're not at the end yet. Starting to get that weird feeling like, uh, does this ever gonna let us out? Did we take a wrong turn? Are we down a side tube that doesn't go out? Kelly just said she feels another draft. And it's kind of gotten very narrow and then opens up again a few times. Yeah. Kelly's trying to squeeze through up there. I think that green there is spray paint, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, well, we've been going long enough to where we're having those moments of like, geez, seems like we should be at the end, but we got to be getting there, got to be getting close. And man, if you lost your flashlight or your batteries died and didn't have backup, this would be crazy sketchy. Um, I wouldn't want that to happen. I was just wondering, like, I wonder if the park service does a sweep through here at the end of the day, but probably not. Like, you could seriously... Seriously, get stuck down here. Okay, we'll do a test to see if we see any natural light. That's a big negative, black as can be. You can see people have carved the letters up there. I don't know how you would get up there. Kelly's getting anxious. Well, now that we're up here, I don't think that's the actual exit for this hike. That looks a little too rugged. I think the signage would have notified us of such. And it just doesn't look like it's, it's been climbed out of. But pretty neat, a little light hole there, the ferns. We're still not out of here yet, but we just came into this high ceiling area. It's got all that reflective white. It doesn't show up on camera, but has a very kind of iridescent reflective. It's deceiving. It feels like there's natural light coming in, but it's just that stuff reflecting. A lot of moisture in the air too. Okay, we gotta keep moving. We've been two hours. I'm not gonna lie guys. I kind of have these moments like we're gonna come to a dead end and realize we have to turn around and our batteries aren't gonna last long enough. But not panicking, but the thoughts are crossing my mind. <laughs> totally honest. Well, we're making our way through here and we can see a light again. We don't know if this is going to be another false, just a light tube, which it kind of looks like it. This may not be the exit again. We shall see. Oh, I see stairs. Just like that, another hole up top, and then it looks like they've got some sort of ladder stairs to get you out of here. Pretty wild. That was way longer than I thought it would be. All right, well, it's time to see if we can climb out of here. Use this little ladder of sorts. 
the stairway to heaven or hairway to Stephen. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Coming out of a big hole here. That's it. We are out into, this is weird. It's like surreal seeing normal daylight. That's it. We did it. <laughs> that was fun. I honestly did get a little nervous at the end there, but we made it. Good hike, buddy. Good hike. <laughs> I'm sad. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, go. gonna get a good slap. Oh, that pretty maple right there. What a trip. I assume we'll find a trail to get us back to the parking lot. Well, we could actually go right back through the tube again, but there is a trail going back to the parking lot. Looks like one and a half miles. And I have to check the mileage on that. It seemed longer than I, I must have misread. But it took us over two hours. Probably about, yeah, almost two and a half hours. So we make our way back to the van and get back to camp. Mix up something to eat, I'm getting hungry. Home sweet home. That's what I love about living in this van. I always get back to home after every hike. Okay, well we came back with an appetite after our hike here. So we wanted to do something fairly quick and easy. We are doing pasta with Skyline Chili. That's a thing. Gonna go with the diced onions and shredded cheddar cheese on top. I think they call that a three-way at Skyline. All right, here's how I like to do it. Pasta, some of the chili, a little bit of the diced onions, shredded cheese on that chili. Top it off with more onions, oh yeah. Save some for Kelly. There it is, Skyline Chili three-way. Right, let's call that a three-way, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Well, I just wanted to thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all soon in the next one. Take care, peace.